Hey guys and thanks for tuning in again. In today's video I'll finally complete my Arduino based wired light controller. If you haven't seen my previous video where I explained how I built my 21 channel relay driver Arduino shield, be sure to check it out here because this is another shield I built for the Arduino Mega and I'm going to build upon the code based on that project. I decided, since I have plenty of input-output pins on the Mega, I would like to use the same Arduino not only to control the relays that you can connect to your home lighting, but also add inputs for physical buttons that you can press in order to control those relays, or any other functionality you want in your smart house. That way you can have a dedicated wired light controller for all the lights in your house. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is a full-feature custom PCB prototype service which recently celebrated their 5th anniversary. They offer high-quality PCB prototyping, designing, custom SMT laser cut stencils and they have a fully-fledged PCB assembly service. Be sure to check out their website pcbway.com and order your custom PCB prototypes starting as low as $5 for 5 boards. Let me explain the principles and code behind the project. First, I set 20 of the Arduino pins to input pull-up. That way, whenever a pin is pulled to ground, the Arduino can trigger an event. As I already keep a state of each relay in the Arduino memory, even when the board is first powered on or reset because of the retained MQTT messages, I know when a button is pressed to send the opposite state. If you want to learn more about MQTT, you can check out my DIY home automation project here, where I explained in detail how the protocol works. And whenever I get a message from a topic connected to a relay, I set it on or off based on the payload. That way I don't have to set up anything different in Node-RED, as we are using the same topics and payloads as before. The buttons I used for this project were these backlit buttons that I got from AliExpress. You can easily drill holes into blank wall plates and mount these switches onto them and mount them in your wall sockets. They are powered by 5, 9, 12 or 24 volts via the two pins on each side. I opted for the 12 volt ones. Apart from those, it has three more pins. A common, normally open and a normally closed pin. From my Arduino, I connected ground to the common and one of the digital input pins to the normally open one. So when the button is pressed, the input pin is pulled to ground and Arduino can do its thing. Mind you, you also have to set a timeout between each subsequent check of the state of the input pull-up pins so that you don't turn on or off the relays really quickly until you release the button. Getting everything connected and tested on the breadboard was one thing, but actually connecting the Arduino with wires and power to each button is a whole other thing. That's why I borrowed the idea from Jonathan Oxer from the Superhouse channel. In his smart home design he uses UTP patch cables, the ones that are used for connecting up your home network, to connect from the Arduino to the light switches. Be sure to check out his website and YouTube channel if you're interested in home automation, electronics and assistive technology projects. I decided to use the standard for PoE enabled cables and the B wiring standard. I connected the first, second, third and sixth pin to my Arduino pull-up pins. Fourth and fifth to 12 volts and seventh and eighth to ground. That way I can use a simple UTP patch cable wires running from the Arduino setup in one part of the house all the way to the light switches around the house and in one light switch you can actually have four buttons controlling four different things. So after testing that everything worked on the breadboard, it was time to make a PCB that would connect to my previous relay shield. As my previous board can control 21 relays, I decided to make a 20 channel board to facilitate most of those relays. In hindsight, I could have maybe went for 24 as there are enough pins on the Arduino, but I may in the future create one unified board with the Arduino microcontroller, Ethernet capabilities and the relays and switches all on one board but that's a project for another time. Once the design was done, 
I headed over to PCBWay.com, who have graciously provided me with all the PCBs for this project. The ordering process was very simple, and you can truly customize every aspect of your prototype PCBs to your liking. Go to PCBWay.com, enter the width and height of your boards, number of layers and pieces, and the thickness of the boards, and click on the Quote Now button. After that, you can customize all the aspects of the PCB production. When you are happy with your selection, click on Calculate. Choose your country and shipping method, enter your email address and click on the Add to Cart button. Once you have done that, upload your Gerber files and click on the Submit Order Now button. In a couple of minutes, the team at PCB Way will check your files and make sure everything is in order. And when you receive an email with the confirmation, you can go ahead and proceed to the checkout. Enter payment details, and when you're done, depending on your shipping method, you can expect your PCBs to arrive very shortly. After waiting for about a week, my PCBs have finally arrived. As they are celebrating their 5th anniversary, I got a couple of goodies in the bag as well. I must say that I'm quite pleased with the overall look of the boards, and I want to thank PCB Way once again for making this video possible. There weren't that many components to mount this time and they are all through-hole parts, so you won't have that much trouble soldering them all if you wish to recreate this project. You maybe noticed that I incorporated a jumper selector. This is so that you have the option of powering the board from either the V-in pin of the Arduino or the external power source. I didn't have a jumper at hand when filming this video, so I just used a regular DuPont cable to connect the two pins together. And it's finally time to test my creation. I used the same cable with four connected buttons I used for testing. I only added an RJ45 connector to the end using the regular B-type connection. And when plugging the Arduino to USB, the W5100 to my network, the relay board to 12 volts, and the newly created cable to the light controller, the LEDs on the buttons lit up, which is a good sign. And when clicking a button, the corresponding LED on the relay board lit up as well. This was actually the first board that I created where I didn't make a mistake during the design process. But that's how I learned, you guys, through your own mistakes. I'm really happy that this design worked as it should and that my DIY home automation prototype is finally finished. I want to thank you all for the support you guys gave me so far. I have many exciting projects coming up that I have to finish, so stick around and make sure you subscribe and let me know that you enjoy my content. If you have any questions regarding this or any other project, make sure to join my Discord channel. I'll try to answer everyone to the best of my knowledge or try to point them in the right direction at least. The link is in the description as well as the links to all my social media profiles and blog. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope you learned something and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!